Hello Crew World, I'm your host James McParlane and today will be a day of talking about reimagining the command line interpreter. Why reimagine the CLI? Command line interpreters have been the backbone of computing for decades. We use them to control servers, manage files, run scripts. If you watch a movie with a hacker doing the hacking that hackers do, it's almost always on the command line. Fun story. I think this is the first movie to be seen using real command line tools. And I'm the reason that they used Nmap in this movie, but that's a tale for another time. Now, let's face it, if the world is going to scary end in a scary way, one plausible scenario concludes with the perpetrator smashing enter onto a command line and laughing out loud. Simply put, command lines are scary to most people. The very first interface for computers was bulbs and switches on the actual computer, but people got pretty sick of that pretty quickly. You had to touch the hot and loud computer, but only one person could touch it at a time. Much better if many people could touch it at the same time and ideally set well away from the big dangerous machine. So they went from this to this by creating these things, which are basically just two-way printers. With a couple of these and some clever software, you could actually have a team of people sitting well away from the hot, loud mess that was computers in those days. They could be quite productive, or whatever this is. And then they got sick of wasting paper and went and put a screen on it. When I was doing visuals at dance parties, these things were dirt cheap, sometimes even free. So I used to set up sets of these wired together and let people chat to each other from one end of a dance party to the other. Fun times in the chill out room. At first, these things just sent ASCII text, but eventually we got to VT100, the granddaddy of all the terminals. This provides today's baseline of minimum functionality for ANSI characters. With this, you could draw blocky characters, blocky graphics with a limited number of shades of gray or amber or green. And after the mid eighties, you started to be able to use a limited number of colors. So in the 1970s and into the eighties, if you interacted with a computer for serious business, it was via one of these things. TOPS, Multix, Unix, CPM, Rista C, VMS, and DOS required mastery of the command line. Even when we switched to personal computers with real interfaces, at the core sat this dangerous little black demon rectangle that the words, we can only do that from the command line would summon into use. Despite the development of graphic interfaces, command lines are still widely used amongst developers and sysadmins. Why is that? I think it's because, for a simple action, it takes less time to make a simple command line tool than to create a simple graphical user interface. A lone developer can map all the functions of an operating system into a tool without having to go through all the UI UX consistency design process. This is also bad, because now you have a dog's breakfast of tools that didn't go through the UI UX consistency design process. Almost anything your operating system can do, you can do at the command line. It's basically economics. First mover advantage, cheap and powerful, basically the Russian oligarchs of the software world. The other advantage is most command line systems allow you to connect the output of one command into the input of others. This creates flows of processing. I feel this is vastly underutilized because of the unfriendliness of the command line. Maybe if it was simplified and command lines were less scary, it could be better leveraged. Now that's an idea. An advantage of modern UIs is that they support undo, which in my opinion is the most underrated feature ever created. I think the world would be a much better place if undo worked in the command line. So that's on my list. Why a new command line? I'm building a thing. It's a server you talk to. I just don't have time to build a visual user interface right now. So I'm starting with command line tools. Let's talk about security. Modern computing has too many secrets. Cloud computing is just other people's computers that you pay for. They give you a key. It's a secret string of text. If you share that key, then anyone anywhere in the world can run up a bill, a bill that you will need to pay for. Same thing with crypto wallets. You can share your public key, but let out a passphrase or even a portion of your private key by accident and your wallet will be empty before you can say, I am Satoshi Nakamoto. We live in a world where all that sits between yourself and sudden poverty is one accident in screen recording. There are kinds of solutions for this, but they are very proprietary and not complete. I want something self-contained. It feels like we need to sit down and take a good look at where we are and what can be done to improve things. Now, I like to design things. I like to build things. So if I have a go at something, I go hard. In the words of my people, now.
I'm a very security and usability first kind of guy, and I want as many people as possible to use what I build. And usability and security are at the core of many command line limitations, so it feels to me like I need to make a new one. This is the best that you can normally get. Before we start, when I say environment, I mean the place in the operating system where name and value pairs are presented to the running application. This is a prime place to store and thus leak secrets. There are some conventions that link these elements together, but most of them are nothing but conventions. A command can be installed from anywhere to anywhere. It may or may not come with documentation and help files. You might have scripts where you can leak hard-coded secrets. These scripts can go anywhere too. You might have a password or credentials manager, but I don't really want to integrate something proprietary into my little project quite yet. I don't want to deal with that integration technical debt. I don't want to force my users to have one. You might have a security team that makes and actively enforces conventions, but I don't want people using my system to have to have one to avoid accidents. I would really like the design an opinionated flow of data to provide this for my users. Now, documentation. Think of manual pages in Unix. If you're lucky, a man page and help is available, but it's mostly a dead document. As you're using the command, you need to remember how to use it. It would be nice if this came to you as you were typing. Once again, there are some systems that do this, but they are modifications of shells and plugins for shells. That's just too much for your average user. One problem is that a command on a command line has no formal definition. It has some inputs and some outputs, but these are not typed, at least not formally. To know a command's comings and goings, you need to read the manual. Two important concepts to consider when designing tools that I follow are repair theory and workflow discovery. The key takeaway, at least for me, is that you want to provide immediate risk-free feedback. You want to let people know that things could get bad before they actually are bad. You want the documentation to come to them as needed to prevent an informational impasse, to reduce the likelihood they don't know how to do something. The other is that if they do make a mistake, they need to be able to backtrack. Now, we need to be able to automate what we're doing. Also, a very simple mental model so that each of these tasks are easy to understand. This is the model that I come up with. The four core goals of this system are protection of secrets, immediate feedback, an encapsulated environment, and forgiving behaviors. I've designed something very simple and functional. Inputs and outputs are mapped into named type stacks that live in the environment. Let's describe the encapsulated environment. What I've designed combines a classical environment of name value pairs, pipes, and secret management all into one system. Certain name types are mapped onto stacks. The most recently used appear at the top of the stack. These are not classic types, but names that imply a type. And when you invoke a command and don't provide an argument explicitly, it will be copied off the top of the stack for that type. This creates a natural recent context of values. In a future feature, I will add the ability to consume items from the top of the stack, as well as relative addressing. But for now, this does the job nicely and has room for expansion. As you can see, one of these stacks in the environment stores secrets. So let's move on to protection of secrets. Because I have a record of what I need to protect, as a last resort, this enables us to filter out any secrets before they hit the display. Filtering them out would be a bit too much, as you would end up with gaps. Masking them out with the same content would make them indistinguishable. So I came up with a concept that I like to call security tartan. I wanted the secret to be censored, but also recognizable. I use colors and some of the ANSI character set, especially the block characters. I also wanted to be able to use a shortcode locally instead of the secret as an extra layer of protection. As you can see, as I'm typing, there's a lot of dynamic documentation. So let's move on to immediate feedback. As I type these command names, I can cursor up and get a list of options. When I choose one, I get shown each individual argument as I'm typing it. So we start by getting a summary of what the command can actually do and what arguments are expected. And then as we move on to each argument, we get more detail. I like this because the documentation comes to the user instead of the user having to remember or stop what they're doing and, and go and look at some man pages somewhere. I also make use of color. So if I get some of the syntax wrong, it will show me exactly where the problem is. Also, the system errs on the side of security. So if you start typing extra arguments on the end, say for example, you 
accidentally split a secret with a space, we mask out any superfluous arguments, just in case they might leak some information. Now if I dump the environment to the console, you can see that things are filtered out. In fact, if I try and retrieve a value from the environment that's a secret, it also gets filtered out. As far as automation goes, what I've done is add a very simple macro recorder. Now this will record both the commands and the web service requests that are made for those commands. So it doubles as both a, an automation tool and a load tester because you can also control the speed and delay between each command. So I'm finding this quite useful to automate little parts of the system as I'm needing it. Now, this is the end of the video. Next I'm working on forgiving behaviors because I really want to finish this feature. So if you look at this, I can run a command, then run up another command, and then a command, but I'm not happy with these quotes, so I know I'm just going to undo it. So here we have a basic form of undo working in the command line. This is a first attempt. Luckily, this is my command line talking to my server. So the end goal here is to be able to have the undo operation operational all the way down to the server, to a point of course, but enough that it provides a level of safety and confidence for users. Thank you for watching. I'm hoping to do this reasonably regularly now. Uh, and if you like this and want more of it, please like and subscribe. Uh, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Dr. Meow and you'll see my mostly daily reports as I work through this. So, hope to chat with you online and goodbye cruel world.